I, I let other people ruin stuff for me a lot as well. I, I'm bad for that. I, that's my fault. I admit that. I let the public ruin things for me all the time. I fucking hate the public so much. <laughs> God, I hate them. <sighs> not you. <laughs> no, not you. All of us, right? All of you. You are here in a basement in an alternative comedy venue watching a not famous man record a stand-up special instead of enjoying the blazing sunshine of a Sunday. Right, none of us are the public. Not in any meaningful political sense. No one's after these votes. No, I don't mean us. I mean them out there. You've seen them. Getting basic questions wrong on daytime quiz shows. <laughs> Throwing up on the bus. Stopping and checking their phone at the top of a busy flight of stairs. <laughs> the public. The reason we can't have nice things. I'll let them ruin stuff for me all the time. I'll give you an example of when I let them ruin something for me. So I live in London with my partner and her parents came to visit us in London from not London. Right? <laughs> if you live in London, those are the two places on earth. And when someone visits London from not London, you must go see a show in the West End. It's, it's in the Magna Carta. <laughs> it's the law. So we took her parents to go see a show called The Play That Goes Wrong. Has anyone here seen The Play That Goes Wrong? A few people. So if you don't, woo indeed, it's very good. If you don't know The Play That Goes Wrong, it's like a parody of an Agatha Christie mystery, you know, the mouse trap. Yeah, you're in a stately home. Someone's been murdered. Did the butler do it? You've seen it. Even if you haven't literally seen it, if you've watched a single evening of ITV, <laughs> you've seen it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know all the characters. Um, so that's the premise, right? But it's a funny, it's like a parody, right? And the joke is that, oh no, this serious murder mystery is being put on by a bunch of fuckwits who, who mess it up, right? They get it all wrong. And like they get their lines wrong and the costumes get all mixed up and the set falls down. Ha ha ha. Now, can I just say how hard it is to accurately describe the play that goes wrong without coming across like then, like I have nothing but contempt for the play that goes wrong. <laughs> I don't, I've seen it twice, it's a guaranteed good time. You just have to understand, it's very hard to positively describe a farce. <laughs> oh, it's a farce. So it's very good, and we go in there, we sit down, and the seating arrangement is as follows, yeah? It goes, parent, parent, girlfriend, me, empty, empty, aisle, yeah? I'm on the flank. I'm vulnerable to the public. The public come in and sit down. Today, they have taken the form of a Spanish lady and her boyfriend. Spanish lady sits next to me, the boyfriend completes the row. First thing I notice about them, they're both pretty tooty from a day of day drinking. Swollen necks. <laughs> Second thing I noticed, they each have an entirely plastic bottle of white wine from, yeah, from the theater bar, one each. <laughs> now, I'm not against this so far, but it's a yellow card. <laughs> to be honest, my first real problem with them, too many snacks. <laughs> I mean, we're talking cheese and onion Pringles, we're talking wine gums, we're talking revels. Now, all of these are fine if you eat them in order. <laughs> but these fucking savages had open bagged all three of those. <laughs> Mixing and matching. It's not tapas, madam. <laughs> not this. I mean, cheese and onion Pringles and wine gums. Are we happy with that flavor texture combo on the molar? They weren't even smell-checking the revels. <laughs> if it's coffee, so be it, apparently. <laughs> Chuck it in there, Heston, let's invent. <laughs> so I thought, okay, these two are gonna be a problem in a way that only I can perceive, apparently. <laughs> but I could never have predicted the precise way, so. The first thing that goes wrong in the play that goes wrong, it's not a big spoiler, don't worry, is that um, they, they find the body right at the start, dead body, and people come on stage, and every time each character sees the body, they say, oh no, there's been a murder, and the music is supposed to go, ba, 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 like that. 
And then a guy comes on and the tech guy fucks it up. He goes, oh no, there's been a murder and no sound. So then he has to just keep going, oh no, there's been a murder. Oh no, there's been a murder. Oh no, there's been a murder. Like looking at the tech guy, like, like the fucking, you know. And uh, everyone's laughing, everyone's excited. This is what we've paid for. <laughs> People are nudging each other. I think it's starting to go wrong. <laughs> at that moment, the drunk Spanish lady next to me says, at this volume, oh my God, he forgets the music. <laughs> And I thought, well, I hope this isn't a pattern. <laughs> that fucking lunatic, audio described for the blind, <laughs> every single joke in both 45 minute halves of the play that goes wrong. It was astonishing. We were four rows from the front. The cast could hear. I don't know what they thought was happening. <laughs> that today the play would be going wrong in 3D somehow. <laughs> today, even the audience misunderstood the premise of why they were there. <laughs> and she was just yelling this. And obviously the steward had to keep coming over from her little, you know, air hostess flippy chair <laughs> to tell her to stop, right? And she would have to come over and just be like, Madam, please. <laughs> you can't live like this. Please stop describing the play. And every time the Spanish lady would do that kind of like drunk person in trouble, like, oh, there you are. Oh, I'm in trouble, you know. But if you're a member of staff like this poor woman, you have to believe the customer, right? You can't secondarily jab your finger in their face and go, you better not be fucking lying to me. <laughs> so the steward lady had to go, thank you for understanding, madam. Safe in the knowledge that the second she got back to her flippy chair, this lady right back to fucking describing. Just like, oh, his wig has come off. This is bad for the play, you know. <laughs> so she could not be stopped. And I was so furious and confused <laughs> that I had to do something I've trained myself to do when the public do something incorrectly. <laughs> and what I do is I, I shut my eyes and I, I imagine a world where they are doing the thing correctly and I am wrong. <laughs> and sometimes that can open up a gap for compassion. Doesn't always work. <laughs> I remember once I was on the train, 9 a.m. sort of commuter train on a Thursday, and a lady came in and sat opposite me, normal lady, dressed for work, and began ramming slice after slice of bread into her mouth from the bag. <laughs> With what I would call fury. <laughs> and obviously I saw that and I thought, oh no. In general. And so I shut my eyes and I imagined a world where that was the best way to enjoy bread. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, no, she's insane. Well, <laughs> worth a try. Worth a try. Give her a chance. But see, the reason I bring it up is on this occasion, it did work. On this occasion, I did it and I thought, you know what? They are right and I am wrong. Because let's face it, they were enjoying the fuck out of the play that goes wrong. I mean, they were having the time of their lives. I can personally vouch that she fully understood every joke. And the boyfriend, well, he was, uh, oh, he was loving it. I mean, he was laughing that slightly frightening pirate laugh. <laughs> and when he laughed, he slapped his thigh. Like a Tudor. And I was the one who was wrong, wasn't I? Because they're doing that, and I'm the one here seething like a little gremlin. You know, oh, they're not even smelling the revels. I'm the dickhead here, right? I... But how do I do that? How do I enjoy anything as much as this battered Spaniard? And it's not booze. I've been drunk in the theatre before, and I've never described a whole play out loud. So what is it? And so I've got to figure it out because you know what? It's costing me money as well, this attitude problem of mine. Because my experience as an audience member is so easily ruined by like phone screen checking, loud chewing, drink slurping, you know. 
I now have to pay over the odds in a cost of living crisis when I have spent all my money on this jacket. <laughs> I now have to pay over the odds to go to exclusionary and elitist cinemas <laughs> where that sort of thing just does not happen. I'm talking picture houses. I'm talking curzons. I'm talking every men. Yeah? Anywhere with a wasabi pea option. Something about wasabi peas just keeps these bastards away. <laughs> and the sort of everyman picture house exclusionary elitist cinema that I go to, that would not have been tolerated. If I had been sat there and, and a drunk Spanish lady had begun to describe the piece of cinema I was trying to enjoy, you know, oh, the bear, he eats the marmalada, yes. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever art house film I'm enjoying. Well, I would immediately call over the maitre d' of the cinema. You know, the head butler of the picture house. So. Like that, I would say, Garçon! Garçon! And he would come over, the full Jeeves, yeah? Tail coat, pinstripe trousers. And you know, butlers have always got that white cloth on their arm? That's soaked in chloroform. That's what that's for. And he would use that to subdue the Spaniard in her chair. Obviously, she would narrate it. <laughs> oh no, the butler, he knocks me out! <laughs> then two footmen would come and carry her to the medical wing of the cinema. <laughs> and the maitre d' would say to me, I'm terribly sorry, sir. And I would say, think nothing of it. But never let this happen again. <laughs> And he would say, of course, as a token of our apology, please accept this 175 milliliter screw top Malbec. <laughs> en plastique. I would say, thank you, and I'd take that, you know. And then he would go, rewind the film. <laughs> We're all going to watch it from the beginning again properly. <laughs> and then he'd take her chair and have it burned. <laughs> Is that so much to ask from five pound Odeon Thursdays or whatever? <laughs> Apparently so. 